Did you know there are seven foods that you might be consuming that creates a lot of inflammation in your body? Arguably, it will shorten your lifespan and lead to diseases faster than smoking cigarettes. Now these foods, some people think they're healthy, but we're gonna outline why they're not healthy for you. As I outline these foods, at the end of the presentation here, I'm gonna share with you the most powerful anti-inflammatory healing supplement for your metabolism, for inflammation, for burning fat and feeling good. So stay tuned for that. Let's start with the first food, wheat. I've interviewed Dr. William Davis on my Metabolic Freedom podcast before, and he has a book called Wheat Belly. In his book, he showed really alarming research on what wheat bread and wheat products, including gluten, does to spike blood sugar in your body. I want you to understand this. The higher your blood sugar levels are inside of your body, the faster you're going to age. When glucose is elevated inside of your body, this is considered a toxic state, and your body will keep shutting out insulin to take it out of the bloodstream and put it into your cells. If this happens short term, there's really no issue. We're designed to deal with it. But when this happens over time, it leads to insulin resistance, which then is the first domino to fall that leads to diabetes and then cancer, heart attacks, kidney failures, and a whole host of other really, really serious conditions. Just to make my point even more, uh, this study showed if your A1C, which is the three month average of your blood sugar levels, are at 7.5% or higher, Every year it's at that level, there's about 100 days taken off your lifespan. Meaning if it's at that level for 15 years, you lose four years off your lifespan. That's how detrimental high blood sugar levels are. Back to the wheat conversation. In the book, Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis, he has shown that two slices of whole grain, heart healthy wheat bread spikes your blood sugar levels as much as a 12 ounce can of soda or a candy bar like a Snickers bar, yikes. Now that spike might not happen right away because there is some fiber in the wheat, but it happens over time. Wheat and gluten and these grains that I'm gonna share with you, a whole list of them, will all turn into sugar in your body. They are all problematic. And it's not just the glucose spike from the wheat that's the problem here. Most wheat is sprayed with glyphosate, herbicides and pesticides. Glyphosate is a nasty chemical which chelates, removes minerals from your body. And why that is significant is because the mitochondria in your body that are responsible for energy production, fat metabolism, and longevity and energy, they can only use two sources of fuel. Amino acids, which your body can produce and you could get from proteins, and minerals. And when you deplete your minerals because of glyphosate, you're essentially starving your mitochondria and it's not able to produce energy. So you're going to feel fatigued. You're going to gain weight. You're gonna have trouble losing that weight. All problems will occur with mitochondrial dysfunction. Another issue with glyphosate is what it does to rip open the tight junctions in your mucosal barrier. You have a physical barrier, your digestive system, that is intact and closed really tightly to keep food that you eat digested and then eliminated through poop. When you consume wheat and glyphosate, what happens is it inflames the digestive tract and it opens up those tight junctions and it allows these food particles to enter your bloodstream. Yes, when you have leaky gut, which most people do from glyphosate, it creates poop particles in your bloodstream. That doesn't sound good. Another issue with wheat is what has been done to it over the years here in the United States. It's called dwarf wheat, in other words, hybridized wheat. And this wheat is very different. The gluten protein in the wheat is very different than what it was many, many years ago. And that wheat protein is extremely inflammatory inside of your body. Whether you have something like celiac disease or a gluten sensitivity or not, it will be a problem inside of your body. This will impact your metabolism, your metabolic health, and lead to symptoms. Additionally, research from MIT researcher Stephanie Seneth and her colleagues Nancy Swanson have proven that glyphosate forces heavy metals, mercury, aluminum, and other nasty toxins inside of our bodies. Glyphosate forces it deeper inside of our tissues, our brain, and our bones, making it harder to get to them. Stephanie Seneth has also shown strong correlations between the application of glyphosate in the United States and serious conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, diabetes, and many others. So here's a list of foods that contain wheat that you want to avoid. Breadcrumbs, bulgur, couscous, most cereals, einkorn, farro, flour, pasta, matzah, seitan, sprouted wheat, wheat protein, biscuits, crackers, cookies, waffles, pancakes, scones, and kamut. Do an audit in your pantry and make sure you're not consuming those products. Healthier alternatives to wheat protein 
are going to be the following. Coconut flour, cassava flour, rice flour, and tapioca flour. Just a quick word of caution, other foods that are heavily sprayed with pesticides include corn, soy, and even coffee. So you want to make sure those are organic, non-GMO. Next, we have farmed fish, farmed seafood, farmed salmon, etc. The problem with farmed fish is as such. Most farmed fish are fed GMO corn, soybean, canola oil, wheat, and other animal byproducts. Farmed fish is naturally gray, so they use a pink dye to make it look more natural. Farmed fish also contains high amounts of something called polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, which have been proven to be carcinogenic, meaning cancer causing. The solution, wild caught fish. When we talk about seafood, the smaller the fish, the healthier. The bigger the fish, the more toxins that accumulate. So we wanna avoid big fishes out there like tuna and swordfish and other big fish out there. And we wanna consume something called the SMASH acronym. So these are gonna be safe, wild caught seafood options for you. SMASH meaning salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. I personally purchase all of my wild caught seafood and grass fed, grass finished beefs and pastured poultry from a company called Wild Pastures. They are clean, they use organic regenerative farming and they taste really, really good as well. And you could get their products at a special deal by going to ketocampmeat.com or clicking the link down below. Next we have industrialized seed oils, also called vegetable oils, also called linoleic acid. I'm gonna give you a list of the nine oils you want to avoid and safer alternatives. But before I do, I wanna make the case to why these are so inflammatory inside of your body. So with that being said, I'm gonna do a magic act right here and I'm gonna draw on my whiteboard so you can understand what this is doing inside of your body. So let's do a magic trick. Here is the whiteboard. And now you can see I have the whiteboard behind me. So let me draw something for you. That right there is a cell. You have about 50 to 70 trillion cells inside of your body. Every cell has this lipid bilayer around it called the cell membrane. That is where the intelligence of your body lies, the innate intelligence. Life begins and ends in that cell membrane. Inside of every cell, you have your DNA nucleus. And it's true, you, you cannot change the genes you were born with, but you can change the expression of those genes. I'm gonna show you how that works. It's called epigenetics. Every cell also has these little organelles called the mitochondria. The mitochondria also have a membrane as well, the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane. These cells contain receptor sites. Receptor sites are very, very important. Think of these receptor sites as cell phone antennas. They, the job of a cell phone antenna is to receive a signal and to perform the job that is communicated to that signal, from the signal. Your cells and your hormones and your nutrients work really, really similar. So you have hormones, you have nutrients, and that is communicating with your cells. And what happens is, if you have too much inflammation around your cell membranes, then the communication system is blocked. Good things cannot get in, bad things can't get out, and problems occur, symptoms, inflammation, weight gain, autoimmune conditions, cancer, etc. When we talk about vegetable oils, seed oils, they are so inflammatory, so unstable, that when you consume them, they enter the membrane of your cells, creating massive amounts of inflammation, but not just your cells, your mitochondria membrane as well. So it inflames them, leading to symptoms. And here's why they're so bad for you, because when you consume these vegetable oils, they stay in your cell membranes and your body fat and your mitochondria membranes for a very long time. The half-life is estimated to be 680 days, meaning if you stop eating them today, because of the point I'm making in this lecture here, then 680 days later, two years later, they will still be in your body, creating inflammation. When they process these oils, what happens is they use high heat, which makes it rancid. Rancidity makes it smell, so they add chemical agents and detergents and bleach, and then they make it look clear by adding more chemicals in it. And then they put it into a bottle, they sell it to you, you heat it up even more, and it just creates this vicious cycle of inflammation. To show you and illustrate how bad these fats are and how industrialized they are, canola oil, which is one of these bad fats, here's a snippet of how canola oil is made. Check this out. Seeds enter a roller mill. They pass between two steel rollers, which crush them into thin flakes. A conveyor then feeds the flakes into a screw press. It has a large revolving screw-shaped shaft enclosed within a slotted cage. 
As the shaft turns, its threads squeeze the flakes with high pressure, forcing out the oil, which then drains out through the slots. 42% of canola seed is oil. This screw press extracts nearly three quarters of that. The remainder is still trapped in the pressed flakes, now referred to as canola cake. The cake exits the other end of the press and moves on to a second extraction. This one, a 70 minute wash with a solvent. This chemical extraction process removes all but a trace of oil. The factory then grinds the cake into protein rich meal, which it sells as animal feed. The extracted oil, stored in large tanks, now enters the refining phase. First, they wash the oil for 20 minutes with sodium hydroxide. During this wash cycle, they spin the oil at high speed so that the centrifugal force separates the natural impurities, which the factory later sells to soap manufacturers. After this cleaning process, the canola oil is visibly clearer. However, it still contains natural waxes, which make it look cloudy. So the next step is to cool the oil to 5 degrees Celsius. This thickens those waxes so they can be filtered out. The waxes don't go to waste either. The factory uses them to produce vegetable shortening. In the factory's lab, technicians recreate production on a small scale to ensure performance and quality. Meanwhile, back in the factory, after washing and filtering the oil, they bleach it to lighten the color, then use a steam injection heating process to remove the canola odor. The oil is now fully refined and ready for bottling. You can see how disgusting that process is. So I'm gonna give you a list here of the nine fats you want to avoid and healthier options. We have canola oil, corn oil, and cottonseed oil. Keep in mind, corn oil is called rapeseed oil in the UK. Then we have soybean oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil. Then we have rice bran oil, grapeseed oil, and refined peanut oil. I would also add in fish oil into the mix because most fish oils are unstable and inflammatory as well. Healthier swaps would be saturated fats and monounsaturated fats. The unique thing about these fats, they contain no to minimal double bonds. So the ones I just mentioned, the vegetable oils, are called polyunsaturated fats. Poly means many. Chemical structure shows many double bonds closely located to each other. When you have a lot of double bonds, like vegetable oils do, that are closely located to each other, it aggressively attracts oxygen and it oxidizes. What happens when you bite into an apple and leave it on the counter for hours, it turns brown. That's exactly what's happening to your cells with these vegetable oils. So those nine fats I just mentioned, plus the fish oil, avoid them. The saturated fats and the monounsaturated fats are much more stable. So I'll first share with you the best fats to cook with. These are animal fats. You have butter, ghee, beef tallow, duck fat, and organic lard from non-hydrogenated pigs. And then the oils for more salad dressings, dips, and low heat temperature cooking are going to be the fruit-based oils, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. These are much healthier for you. Now the challenge is when you go to restaurants and I know I've been to a lot of restaurants, even fancy restaurants or healthy restaurants and they're usually 99% of the time going to cook with these bad fats. So what I do is I tell them I'm allergic. As a matter of fact, I use my seed oil allergy card which says, dear chef, I'm allergic to these following oils and it lists those bad oils I mentioned. Please swap them for these healthier options and it lists the healthier options that I mentioned as well. You can actually get this seed oil card for free Use it, download the image to your phone, show it to your server, and it works really well so you don't take that hit. Remember, two years after you consume these vegetable oils, or half of them still remain in your body fat. So if you head to seedoilcard.com or click the link in the notes below, you could get the seed oil allergy card for free. My gift to you. Next, we have fruit juice and excessive fruits. The problem with fruit juice, high fructose corn syrup, and eating a lot of fruit in general it contains a high amount of fructose. And I've interviewed two thought leaders in this space of fructose research. Dr. Perlmutter was on the Metabolic Freedom Show, and he, he made the case that when you consume fructose, it raises your uric acid levels. When you have higher levels of uric acid, it could lead to gout flare-ups, but also increase your risk of brain disorders like Alzheimer's and dementia. Uric acid has also been linked to metabolic diseases like high blood pressure and diabetes. 
your body cannot handle more than five grams of fructose at a time. And when you juice those fruits, it creates a concentrated amount of fructose. Or when you eat excessive fruits, especially packaged foods that have high fructose corn syrup, your body can't metabolize that. So what ends up happening is that the liver has to work overtime. And that liver is very important. I call the liver the soccer mom organ because she does everything for us like the soccer mom. And when you consume a lot of high fructose corn syrup, fruit juices and fruit, fructose in general, 90% of fructose is metabolized by the liver. So when you consume too much fructose, it creates a fatty liver, which leads to a fatty pancreas, more visceral fat, more fatty organs, and that is a metabolic disaster. Another issue with fructose is what it does to cause weight gain. Dr. Richard Johnson, who is the author of why nature wants us to be fat. He was also on my Metabolic Freedom podcast. He made the case that animals, for example, in the wilderness, before they're about to hibernate, like bears, for example, they consume a whole bunch of fruit and fructose to put on as much fat as possible to get through hibernation. Okay, so when we consume fructose, we're packing on fat around our organs, body fat, and it's going to cause weight gain and prevent you from losing weight as well. The solution, avoid fruit juice. Limit your fruit intake depending on how healthy your metabolism is. And if you do have fruit, make sure you move your body after you consume it. Go for a walk, build some muscle to help absorb some of the glucose from the fructose as well. The next item here are artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners have been shown to disrupt your gut microbiome, to increase your cravings by increasing levels of ghrelin in your body, which is the hunger hormone, and decreasing levels of leptin, which is the satiety hormone. So a lot of people think, uh, instead of having soda, I'm gonna have diet soda, but it actually creates a response for you to have more cravings for sugar, which most people will fall into and they'll lose that battle. Studies have shown that Splenda, which is sucralose, a study from May 2023, the study showed that sucralose is genotoxic, meaning it damages your DNA. That's not good. Other studies suggest that there could be a glucose and insulin response for some people when they consume sucralose. That's not good as well. So here is a list of the artificial sweeteners you want to remove. Sucralose, which is Splenda, aspartame, and associated potassium, also called ACE-K. Healthier alternatives to those artificial sweeteners are monk fruit, stevia, allulose, xylitol, erythritol, and even raw honey in small amounts depending on how healthy your metabolism is. If you want a comprehensive grocery shopping list that goes even deeper than what I outlined today, then download my Keto Camp Blueprint. In the Keto Camp Blueprint, you'll see the best foods to cook with, uh, the best ways to cook the foods, the best proteins, the best fats, the best sweeteners, checking glucose and ketones. We put this comprehensive guide for you to get for free over at ketocampblueprint.com or click the link down below. Okay, next we have beer and wine. Don't shoot the messenger. Look, alcohol in general is a toxin to the body. Every sip of alcohol, even a clean source of alcohol, will kill brain cells in your body. What else happens though when you drink alcohol is that your body, especially your liver and your metabolism, they need to prioritize getting rid of that toxin, the alcohol. So it'll stop fat burning. It'll stop other important detoxification systems when alcohol is in your body. The worst offenders are beer and wine. When I interviewed Dr. Zach Bush on my Metabolic Freedom podcast, he made the case that the average California wine has 64 herbicides and pesticides in it. Yikes, and we just made the case how dangerous glyphosate is for inflammation, leaky gut, and diseases out there. There are 76 additives approved by the FDA for the use in winemaking, including toxins like dimethyl decarbonate. Many of the most popular wines out there are full of these additives and also sugar. When you drink alcohol, it stimulates your appetite and also decreases, suppresses testosterone levels for up to 24 hours. And beer in particularly raises estrogen to an extraordinary amount, up to 300% when you drink a lot of beer. So the infamous beer belly is really an estrogen belly. Biochemically, the higher levels your estrogen are, the more readily you absorb alcohol and the slower you break it down. So if you choose to drink alcohol, the best options are going to be clear liquors, whiskey, vodka, tequila. On the rocks, without any mixes, those are gonna be handled much better in your body versus beer and wine. 
if you choose to drink wine, there is a set of wine that would be a healthier option for you. First of all, you could go for European wines, which typically don't have the glyphosate that we spoke about. But what I recommend to my clients who choose to drink wine is biodynamic wine that is organic. And there's a great company called Dry Farm Wines that create these healthy wines, no pesticides, no additives. They're also low in sugar. If you're doing keto, you could potentially have some and still stay in ketosis. I wrote a whole article on the wine industry and you could read that article. We'll put a link for it down below. And if you want to check out Dry Farm Wines, go to ketocampwine.com and check out their healthy wines. I'm also going to give you some tips here on how to metabolize wine better, more efficiently, which mitigates the damage and prevents you from being hungover. So the first tip is to take glutathione, a high quality glutathione that gets into the cell about an hour before you drink your alcohol. Glutathione is a master antioxidant. It helps your liver metabolize the alcohol faster. So you might want to consider taking that before an hour before your alcohol. In addition to that, an hour before you also want to take a strong binder that has not just activated charcoal, but a synergy of binders to help metabolize that toxin as well. So I recommend a company called Systemic Formulas Bind for the binder and Systemic Formulas G-Cell for the glutathione. You could get both of them over at ketocampsupplements.com. We'll reference that link down below as well. You could also consider eating asparagus either before, during, or after you have the alcohol. There's some really cool studies showing that asparagus is applied for alleviating hangover symptoms, but you could actually have it the night of the alcohol to help with the metabolism of it and to prevent the hangover as well. There's a study that I'll reference down below that showed asparagus helps with the liver's ability to detoxify and remove the alcohol faster. And the next food that's actually not really technically a food, but it's creating a lot of inflammation in your body are bad thoughts. I know it's not a food, but this is probably the most important tip here. Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a world-renowned cell biologist, again, I've had him on the Metabolic Freedom Podcast, he has proven with his research that your thoughts are a frequency that have the ability to communicate to your DNA. I just showed you that DNA nucleus, and it signals to the DNA to produce specific proteins. If it's a hateful thought, angry, resentful thought, a bitter thought, that frequency sent to your DNA signals to your DNA to produce inflammatory proteins, which actually creates inflammation in your body, shortens something called your telomeres, which protects your DNA, leading to oxidative damage and a shortened lifespan. But if it's a happy thought, a loving thought, a grateful thought, an abundant thought, same frequency is sent, but now the response is very, very different. The proteins that are produced by the DNA are anti-inflammatory. The telomeres that protect your DNA are lengthened, which extends your lifespan. And studies show that the average person has 50 to 60,000 thoughts every single day. And they estimate that 90% of those daily thoughts are the same thoughts from yesterday, and 85% of those thoughts are negative thoughts, stinking thinking. And if your thinking is stinking, your health is shrinking, which leads me to the most important supplement to take starting today, anti-inflammatory, helps with fat metabolism, helps with brain fog, helps with any health benefit you're seeking. This is called vitamin G. Dr. Joe Dispenza has shown with vitamin G intake, 1200 chemicals take place instantaneously in the body, in the brain that turn on amazing chemicals and neurohormones and neurochemicals like GABA, oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin. Studies also show that people who consume vitamin G versus those that don't have lower levels of the A1C blood sugar marker, lower blood pressure levels, and also have a happier life. So I don't have a link to share with you to buy vitamin G because vitamin G is the practice of gratitude. Those studies are legit and they are done on gratitude. When you feel and experience gratitude, vitamin G, you get all these amazing processes that happen in a second. Gratitude rewires your brain to focus on more things to be grateful for. And whether you think this is woo woo or not, this is a universal law. What you feed energy to expands, meaning what you appreciate appreciates. So let me ask you this right now. What do you have vitamin G for today? Let me know in the comment section down below. What are you grateful for today? Get your daily dose of vitamin G. It's free. There's no up or limit. You can take it throughout the day and you benefit every single time. If you enjoyed today's video, watch the next video on the screen here about six ways to raise nitric oxide and repair your body by lowering inflammation. The average American consumes 300 to 400 grams of carbohydrates every day. That creates something called advanced glycation end products. And yes, the acronym for that is AGES because it's going to age you faster.